easy survey. If you knew that I harvested crops that I didn't plant and gather crops that I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, take the money from that servant and give it to the one with 10 bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given and they will have abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. The word of the Lord is blessed. Before you take your seats, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the preacher's going to talk about today. I can't afford to be useless in this season. Hallelujah. You may take your seat. Tell somebody, I can't afford. Come on. Come on. Look about three people and say, I can't afford to be useless. Come on. Tell somebody, I can't afford to be useless. In this season, you have heard the word of the Lord. Amen. And I don't plan to preach long. This is one of those moments you got to catch it. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. As I looked at this pericope, I looked and studied and meditated. And rehearsed, and I was insensitive. Uh, I was sensitive to the now season that we are in. But I want to look at about three, I think, different four observances from this passage, and then we'll get into the prophetic word and we're going home. Number one, as we look at this passage today, the first thing that I noticed and I hope you did, that the master gave everyone talents. Everybody got something. Look at your neighbor and say, everybody has something. Everybody got something from the master, but he gave it to them according to their individual abilities. According to what they should have been able to handle. He didn't give them any more. He didn't give them any less. He gave them according to the wiring and the capacity that he created. Or of which they were created. So the master gave everyone talents. Secondly, oh, this is good. The talents did not belong. A talent basically is actually a weight, so the value would depend on whether or not it was copper, gold, or silver back then. But but the talents, the money, the what he gave to each individual servant did not belong to the servant. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Amen. The talents that they were given were not theirs. The talents that they were given, they were only stewards over because the talent actually belonged to the master. Oh, this is good. Let me bring it and sit it in your lap. That gift, abilities, all of the things that you have that you are supposed to do and can do really does not belong to you. God gave you abilities, several opportunities, giftings, things that you can do, and as long as you don't understand that you are merely a steward, you will waste what you have been given. Uh, Didn't belong to the servants. The servants merely had stewardship of them. It wasn't their stuff. And good stewards of my time and my resources so that I may honor God with the gifts that he's number three 
after he gave them gifts according to their abilities, he gave them exactly something to be a steward over. The third thing that happened was the master left. Mm. He went away. Here, I'm out. I know, I was like that last night. I was like a kid. I was like, oh my God, this is so good. This is so good. Anybody ever stayed the word? It's just so good. It's so good. You enjoying your own cooking? I'm a good cook. I love it when I love my own food. It's real good. I mean, it's just good. It's good. And so, 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 so the master left without telling them what to do with what he had given them stewardship over. He had an unspoken expectation of what they should do with his resources. <laughs> he didn't have a meeting with them and said, I want you to do this. I want you to do this. Here's how you do the business. Here's how you multiply. He had an expectation that they would multiply, that they would increase what he had entrusted into their care. He didn't have a meeting. He didn't explain what I want you to do with this seed. He didn't explain what I want you. Here's my money. I'm giving it to you. Yeah. And I'm out. Yeah. It was up to the steward to be in touch and in tune with the master without the master ever saying what they needed to do. He had an expectation of multiplicity. He expected more back than even what he gave because when you get your gifts, when you get your talent, when you get your seed, anything you get from God, you get in seed form. You've got to take the seed out of the pot. Plant it in the ground and do your due diligence so that the seed could grow and not just grow, but grow up and not just grow up, but grow, grow up and become greater. Amen. Amen. The master didn't outline the plan for multiplicity. He had an expectation because Here's where your godness comes into play. What do you mean, your godness? Am I talking to the kingdom in this house? Hallelujah. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. Because we open the passage, and the passage says, and the kingdom works like this. I said, is there any citizens of the kingdom in the house? And so if you understand that you are the kingdom of God, if you understand that you are of God and his kingdom, and that we reign and rule right now in the earth, then you are hearing me speak to you because you are the kingdom. And if the kingdom is this wise, that is unto you what you're supposed to be doing. God has given you gifts and talents and resources in C4. He made you a little God in the earth. Say it. That's right. He made you a little God in the earth. I am. He made you to operate as he operates in the earth. And if you're operating as he's operating, then you understand that what he told Adam is that whatever you name it, Adam, that's what it will be. This is where your creation comes in the earth. How was the earth framed? By the words that they spoke. And so when he spoke words, he saw something. And what he saw in his inner being came on the outside because he did something with what he saw, with what was on the inside of him. 
us a talk. Yeah. Yeah. They had an imagination. Uh-huh. They just had an imagination. And then they worked together with one accord. Kingdom, do you hear me? Oh, yeah. Do you hear what the Spirit of the Lord? Yeah. The fourth point. I'm halfway through my message. The fourth point. In looking at this pericope that we see, <laughs> after we see that everyone got talent, the talents didn't belong to them, they were just stewards, we see that the master left, gave them opportunities to act like God in the earth with an expectation of multiplication. Yeah. Then we see that the reward is the same. As long as they produced according to their several abilities. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. Ain't no need for you to be jealous because I can do 50,000 things. Ain't no need for you to hate on me because they don't even belong to me. He just wired me. It ain't my fault. He just, I'm not really talking about me. I'm just saying if I talk about you, you might get upset. Uh-huh. Ain't no need of you getting upset because Elder Young can do all this stuff or Pastor Williams or, 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 or Maya or DJ or whomever because they can do all this stuff. It ain't got nothing. No, 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 no. The master gave everybody something. Our capacities are different, but it doesn't make us greater. Our purpose is different, but it doesn't make us better. The reward is the same as long as you produce according to your several abilities. Doesn't matter whether you were given one or two or five. What matters is that you multiply. Oh my God. What matters is that you multiply. What matters is that you multiply. What matters is that you use well what you have been given. Because if you don't use well what you have been given, the principle says it will be taken away. principle in the Bible says that if you are not being fruitful and multiply, the Bible talks about cutting away in John chapter 15. talks about cutting away. If there is no use for you, why be here? Nah. If you're not multiplying, there is really no use. If you don't do something with your purpose and with your talents and with your gifts, there is no use for you. You are useless. Ah. What matters is that you multiply what you have been given. And you know, it's amazing to me how saints who are clueless borderline AIDS. Talk like they've been sucking on lemons and persimmons and complain about how the Bible principles don't work. I I have nothing. We always struggling. This is what's in our videos. I mean, it's not me. My mama, I mean, it's in the projects. I mean, it's not me. According to your faith, so be it unto you. Amen to that. I don't care what side of the track you were born on. You've got a talent that you can multiply and is designed to increase you more and more. And what's happening, the reality is, the reason why you're miserable and not fruitful is because, I'm not talking to anybody in here, I'm just saying this for the purpose of, 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 of the download that people will hear all over the world. Listen. The reason why it's not working for you because you're not working it. And God told you, the principle says, if you don't do something with what I gave you, I'm coming back and I'm taking it from you. So even that which you had, you no longer have. You're just existing and functioning without resources, without talents, without, you're not multiplying. Living this life
life will cause you to live on a hamster wheel and you don't have time to get into your, your real purpose. You don't have time to get into the realness of why you are actually here. It is not that you're supposed to live day to day, going to work, coming home, going to work, coming home, going to work. We have taught you in this house that a J-O-B is just over broke. You can't settle for a J-O-B. Keep the J-O-B and find the string. I'm going to say this now because when I got through this and I'm going to back up, I'm ahead of myself, but I was doing this lesson last night and been on this page for a couple of days. The word of the Lord, let me just stop. The word of the Lord came to me this week and it blessed my life. Oh my God. And it's been blessing hundreds of others. I thank God for social media. Ooh. Hi, thanks. Thanks for listening. Listen, when I come on live, y'all repost. Can you help me? Repost, repost, because I got something to say. Don't just like it. Like it and then repost. That's how we spread the word. Right? Came to me this week. Bless my life. And, and before I get too far, I, I want to say that I know a lot of times you guys hear me talk about numbers, but I only, now, now if I don't preach no more, I'm just going to talk. Now, 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 now. Y'all hear me talk about numbers a lot. And I only do that when I get a download. I know I study a lot about biblical numbers, but sometimes people go off the deep end and everything ain't, you know, everything ain't, no, no, everything ain't, it ain't that deep. But sometimes, and so I just want, just because, I just want to prove to some of y'all that the Bible has a lot to do with types and typologies. Uh, numbers and colors in the Bible have great significance when you're interpreting scripture. Um, 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 the word of the Lord is clear, it's written, and it's deep. Uh, in what is revealed a lot of times through patterns and types and symbolism. Uh, 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 the Hebrew hermeneutic, hermeneutics uh, has an interpretation approach when they're interpreting scripture that includes something called remez, R-E-M-E-Z, and it's a hint of a hidden message or a deeper meaning that is below the surface of the words that you read. So numbers and clutters, colors a lot belong to remez. It's a remez. It's a, it's a hermeneutic. It's a way that they interpret or approach the Bible when studying it. So I believe that almost everything in scripture has significance. I recognize the version, the King James and all that, and I, I get all of that. But I believe still, even though that the Holy Spirit helped to write the Bible. I just believe that men were inspired by God. I believe that some things are not accurate in each translation. I believe that. But I just believe. That's why you got to be in tune to the rhema and the logos. Yeah. you got to be able to read the written word of God and have a spirit that quickens and a touch, a, a touch with, so then you know what to follow. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. I believe that everything has significance and knowing that everything was put there by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I believe sometimes that we should approach symbolism even of biblical numbers uh, with the desire to understand what God is trying to reveal to them. And so I woke up on the last day of April and the spirit of the Lord said, "May is tomorrow." Oh my God, it don't even have anything to do with the fact that it's my birth month, but I'm glad it is. Oh my, any May babies, May babies, where you at? May babies, come on, May babies. Let me see May babies, May babies, May. Yeah, 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 yeah. May babies are wonderful babies. But as I was preparing last night, I got extra excited because the other day he told me that it's the fifth month. And the number five has a lot of significance. And I just want to drop right here that not only is this the fifth month, but it's the fifth day of the fifth month. Sorry. Oh, I'm excited. My God. The number five. Let me talk about the symbolism first so that you can see there's reason to understand because now the prophet's on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the, the five, the number five in scripture, if you study it out, symbolizes grace. Symbolizes God's goodness and favor. 
toward humans as is mentioned 318 times in the scripture five is the number of grace and multiplied by itself i'm looking forward to the 25th day grace upon grace there's a scripture in John 1 and 16 that says, from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Yeah. Ooh, that's good to me. And the, let's look at the number five. I'm just going to set up a little bit about the number five. I'm going to tell you prophetically, and then I'm, I'm done. The Ten Commandments contains two sets of five commandments. The first five commandments are related to our treatment and relationship with God. And the last five commandments are re related to our relationship with other humans. Appearances of the number five, it gets better in scripture. There are five primary types of offerings if you study that God commanded Israel to bring them. The burnt offering, the sin offering, the trespass offering, the grain offering, the peace offering. The book of Psalms is divided into five major sections. I won't get into all the sections, but all the different sections mean something. There are five books of the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, commonly referred to as the Pentateuch, yes. which also, by the way, Penta means five. Yes. Right. The four Gospels plus Acts right. equals five books, which are set as they are set, can be designated as the New Testament Pentateuch. The, the, they reveal Jesus' teaching concerning the law and the prophets. The apostle John wrote five books centered on grace of God and eternal life. Yes. Jesus multiplied five loaves of barley to feed the 5,000. Yeah. How could you say numbers mean nothing? Well, the tabernacle in the wilderness profoundly reflects God's grace in its use of the number five. The tabernacle whose design was given directly by God contained five curtains, five bars, five pillars, five sockets, and an altar made of wood that was five cubits long and five cubits wide, and the height of the court within the tabernacle was five cubits. All of that is in the book of Exodus chapter 26. And 27. The holy anointing oil that's found in Exodus 30, the ingredients of which were given directly by God, was used to consecrate the furniture in the tabernacle. It was comprised of five parts, for it was a revelation of pure grace. The proportion of the spices in making the oil were a multiple of five, in which had a hint of olive oil add to it. Pure myrrh, 500 shekels. Sweet cinnamon, 250 shekels. Sweet calamus, 250 shekels. Castle, which is 500 shekels. You ain't satisfied yet? <laughs> Additional meanings of the number five that I found. There are five books in the Bible that contain only one chapter. Second John, Third John, Philemon, uh, Jude, and Obadiah. Moses wrote five books, and most of any of the Old Testament writer in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul wrote 14 books. Babylon's King Nebuchadnezzar was given by God a dream where he saw a giant statue of a man. This statue, according to the interpretation given by the eternal, uh, uh, eternal to Daniel, uh, represented the five periods of the world ruling empires. Some say that five also represents the humanness of man. The weakness of man. Man's limitation, but his dependence, man's insufficiency creates God's opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Because remember, we have five fingers, yeah. five toes, yeah. five senses. Yeah. Yeah. I just started thinking about all the things the number five represented that blessed my life. There are five kinds of animals were sacrificed under the Levitical law, goats, sheep, cattle, pigeons, and doves. Five loaves fed the great multitude. There were five brothers in Luke chapter 16 who would not believe Moses and the prophet. There were five husbands and they could not satisfy the woman at the well. There were five wounds that was inflicted upon Jesus. Two in his hands, two in his feet, and his head while he was alive on the cross. A sixth one he received after he died. Five empires of man represented in King Nebuchadnezzar's statue. So, I think I've proven that the number five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's really important in scripture, I'd say, wouldn't you? Yeah. There, the word of the Lord came to me. 
And here's where I'm about to close. So we'll pull all of this together. There are recognizable, identifiable patterns that you have operated in in your life. All of your life, for the most of us, we have established patterns. We don't recognize that we've established patterns because they become who we are and kind of what we do. Are you listening now? So the Holy Spirit said there are patterns in your life that you have erected. And the enemy of your soul, hear ye the word of the Lord, the enemy of your soul has watched you, studied you, observed you, and he is so much aware of your patterns. I'm not just talking about a devil. I'm talking about anything that is the enemy of your soul. I'm talking about your enemies. I'm talking about your haters. I'm talking about whatever would block you from your greatest productivity in life. They hate you. Those that are jealous of you. They observe your patterns. And the Lord said to me, you have to know your patterns better than your opponent knows you. We just go through life. Work in these patterns. We just live out. We just how, how do you, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? This is what it means. Every time you're ready to move forward and do something new, they sit in the same things. They do the same things. Well, what do you mean? No, no, no. Okay, you don't get it. You're not okay. <laughs> Okay. They send the same things. They send the negative energy to you to hinder your productivity. Uh, what, what do you mean? Fear shows up. I'm going to bury it in the ground. I'm scared. I can't. No, I don't know. Anybody going to want this? Maybe no. No, I know this is an idea, but no, baby. I don't know if it's going. I don't know if it's going to feed me. I don't know if I need to launch. I don't know if I. I don't know if I can do this. I just. I don't know. I don't know. Those destructive death self-defeating, self-sabotaging thoughts. Lack, car breakdown, kid got to go to the hospital, you got to get a new tire, baby need a new pair of shoes, light bill due, all of these things coming at you is messing with your ability to produce. Children acting funny, acting crazy, cutting up in school, husband or relationship or the things that you count most dear goes out of whack and causes you to lose your focus and not put your focus on productivity. But now your energy, your resources, your focus is on that. It's the enemy of your soul. Let's watch you. And pushes the buttons of your remote that you don't even realize you have given to him. They talking about me. How come they don't know I'm really nice? I'm not. All of that is stupid. Pop the dumb stuff. Do it with the background noise. Shout in their face. Produce regardless. Your boss acting crazy. Some of that doesn't happen to any of y'all. Some of it is the old tool of discouragement. You don't even know why you woke up feeling crazy and discouraged and just don't want to. Come on. It's a constant occurrence. Every time you, you were fine until you made the declaration, I'm moving forward or I'm about to produce in the earth. Then comes the sickness. The crippling makes you think I can't and I shouldn't and I'm not able all the while while that remote is being pushed you are not producing in the earth you are not being a good steward of the resources because all of your energy and your focus is on that and not on what you've been entrusted to produce
embraces you. The root of rejection. The fear of abandonment. Things that happened to you that you had no control over. The job. Anything like that. Anything. I'm addressing the enemy of your soul yeah. as anything that would hinder right. your production. Right. So those are constant patterns. Your homework assignment is to sit down write in a book somewhere. Think about the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you and help you. Think about every time you felt like getting up and out. Think about what came. Think about what happened. Think about those feelings. Think about that anxiety. Think about that fear and write it down as a pattern. He said, You've lived with patterns that has hindered your productivity. And then I heard myself say, I am in this world, but I am not of this world. So the rules of this world and this world system will not dictate to me. I am not natural. I am supernatural. I am above only and not beneath. I am supernatural and therefore I have the power within me to eradicate old patterns and set up new systems. You got some patterns, but God says I've given you what you need in you to erect new systems that will annihilate old patterns. I have the ability to erect new systems to eradicate old patterns. Say it. I have the ability to erect new systems to eradicate old patterns. I have the ability to erect new systems and eradicate old patterns. It starts with a change of the mindset and a change of the mouth set. Say that. You got to change what you allow yourself to think and you've got to change what you allow yourself to say. You've got to change what you allow yourself to think and you've got to change what you allow yourself to say. And the more you say it out of your mouth, it will change what you think. And the more you say it out of your mouth, it will change what you think. And the more you say it out of, the enemy knows. We tell y'all in church, say so and so and y'all sit there like this. Uh-huh. You don't understand the power of say. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You've got to create your world by the words you speak. You can't think it in your heart. You've got to say it out of your mouth if you're going to build it. The power of creation goes with what you say. Amen to that. Yes. Amen to that. That's right. Yes. So when you see, the Holy Spirit told me, when you feel, when you see, when you hear, you know what? The truth of the matter is folk don't like me. They got a problem. I'm so lovable. <laughs> no, I really am. No, we love you. You know, in the text, the lazy, the slothful servant, he said something real wonderful but stupid. Master came and said, well, what? The first thing he said, don't say it, because I know you. I know you. Come on, come on. That's the first thing he said. I was not looking at the text. He said, I know you. I know what you like. I know what you was going to do. I know. So this is what I did. I was scared, honey. I went ahead and put that talent in the ground so I'd give you a little talent back. I wasn't doing because I know you. The reality is he didn't know him. He didn't know him. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't know him. Yeah. Some of you think you know me. Some of you think you know people that are designed to push you. Some of you think you know God. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't be more wrong. Yeah. If you Yeah. 
So the enemy said, I'm almost done. That boy said, I knew you. So I wasn't going to do nothing with it. I'm put it in the ground so I can dust it off and give you your same little talent back. Mm. Isn't that what some of us in the kingdom are doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Nobody in here. You know what the Holy Spirit told me when I was studying last night and praying? He said, tell city of God. If they are not in a posture. He said, this is the order of the house. You are in this apostolic house, in this season, and in this moment. And if you are not tuned in, or anxiously anticipating, or looking for, or hearing for your streams, you're out of order. Aha! I like it. I like it. Some people don't like that, but I'm on a fix it. Like I don't work, child. But you're alive! You're alive. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And you have gifts! Yeah. And you have talents! Yeah. And you have several. Don't get comfortable on your little retirement shack! What are you yeah. doing? You're the kingdom! Yeah. You're supposed to be multiplying! If you're satisfied with just the J-O-B, you're out of order! Yeah. Yeah. If you're satisfied with your little husband's retirement shack, you're out of order! and told him I was going to say that because the Holy Ghost said it to me and I ain't never thought that in my life honest to God I said that's a hard word oh God say it. you mean if I'm at the city and I try to at least hear God define a stream or want one So when you feel that old stuff coming up that the enemy of your soul uses against you, he said, instead of this time bowing to it, fight like hell. Yes. 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 Against hell yes. Yes. and all of its resources that's coming against you. Because that needs to be from now on a true indication to you that I'm on the right track. When the depression comes, when the fear comes, when the lack comes, you just need to start Oh, I see you, devil. Oh, oh, oh. Instead of bowing to it this time, you need to recognize it as your cue from heaven. Come on, girl. Push. Come on. You got this. Come on. Let's do it together. Come on. Press through. Come on. Let's move. Come on. Don't sit there. Come on. Rise above it. Do it while you're hurt. Do it while you're feeling it. Still, that's why you got to write the vision and make it plan so that when you can't heat, when you cannot feel it, you can read it. So, all of that 
what he's about to do at five. And this is my quote. The Holy Spirit said to me that in this fifth month, the number of grace. Grace, the greatest definition, goes beyond unmerited favor. The greatest definition says it's the ability of God in you to do what you could not normally do in and of yourself. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So, there is a wind present in this month. Hear ye the word of the Lord. There is a wind present. Huh. You don't have to feel the wind. You know how prophetic, prophetic things work? Those who believe in it work it. It works. I ain't no lying prophet. I know what I know. There is a wind present. There is a super coming on your natural. Right, that's right, that's right. That's what the Holy Ghost said. You're right, There's a super coming upon your natural. He says, and you can get more things done because of the wind of the spirit of grace that is present to push you. Remember, grace is the ability of God in you to do what you could not normally do in and of yourself. You can get more done in this month than ever. You don't have to feel it. You just got to believe it. You got to know it. And you got to get in position to work. The wait is over. We've gotten so accustomed to waiting well. The spirit of entrepreneurship, the spirit of multiplication and streams with acceleration is here upon us. I wish somebody would dare to ride it, dare to receive it, dare to go with it. This apostolic anointing, the Bible says that it brings forth the spirit of boldness, the spirit of grace, the spirit of favor. This is the order of the house. For the mouth of the Lord has surely spoken. Everybody stand up and worship your God. Receive the wind. Receive the wind. Receive the wind. Lord, I come against that stale spirit, that comfortable spirit. Ignite us for the more. God, we need to reproduce. We need to multiply. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I take scales out of your eyes and plugs out of your ears. There is a wind of the spirit of grace. Come on, you're going to tune in. You're not going to be all over the place. Huh? Shut up, the old son. You got the little issue. You got the higher. Come, 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 come. Do what seems natural to you. Don't make me provoke you into where you need to go. This is your finest hour. Seems 
Because he's using you to help others. You don't have to feel nothing. You just got to do something. Your prayers during that time is going to cause people to burn. They're going to awaken out of their slumber. Come on. God is depending upon you to intercede. That's why he's wakening you up. He don't want you just sitting there going, why am I waking up evil? Rokosha, get out of your bed. Walk the floor. You ain't got to feel nothing. Oh, Shema, there's a grace of God. Sometimes he'll have you work for you, and other times you're a watchman on the wall. I sucked for a man who was standing the gap. He says, but I could find God. You don't have to live your life confused in confusion and cycles of insanity because your family was crazy and your mama didn't make it out. What you do in this season matters. We're under an open heaven. But it's not in your time. It's in his time. And since the wind is present, you gotta walk in it. You gotta do it. Everything, even though it seems crazy, y'all listen. He stops talking when you disobey. So that idea comes to your mind and you don't do nothing with it. You're like the man with the one talent. You're, you're, you're unproductive. You're a wicked and slowful servant. I can't afford. You're useless. The word of the Lord to us is, I can't afford to be useless, not in this season. Come on, I heard God say that what you do in this season is generational. 
is going to impact generations. Your children <laughs> and your children's children. Shema. This is not just for you. This is not about 50 extra dollars in your bank account. Bigger. Come on. Come on. Come on. The kingdom of God. Apostolic people are global. Stop thinking about your little extra money in your account. It's bigger than that. Systems. Generational wealth. I prophesy upon you. Greater grace. A great grace. Stop thinking about the now. What you do now is impacting your future. The wind of grace is upon you. Receive it. There is a fresh wind. Flowing from heaven is designed to push you into new places in God. If you just receive the wind of the Spirit now, everything about your life will change. He's transforming your world. He's giving you new ideas, fresh inspiration. Flow with me in the Holy Ghost. It's the spirit of grace, it's upon us now. The spirit of grace, the spirit of boldness, the spirit of my Yoshimai. Great grace, great grace, great grace is released upon your people under this open heaven now, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, it's not going to be just us that buys the book. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh -huh. Shema, come on, come on, come on. I activate you with businesses. I activate you with ideas. I activate you with new ministry assignments. I activate, come on, come on, come on. My mouth is going to make money for me. People are attracted to me. Social media is working for me. They love me. They listen to me. They want me. I have something to say. You need to say something. I don't know what you need to say but in this atmosphere release talk about that thing it's something they want today if you're under the sound of my voice you receive this word and the holy spirit is quick and you shabbat stick it in two things we're going to do and we're going home everybody find a seat real quick i don't care what it is give your children something buy a fine money Come and get my wallet. Come, baby, come. Shabbat. Get something. Everybody find something and throw on this altar. It's a seed. I'm not playing. I don't even know what the budget is. It ain't got nothing to do with the budget. This ain't no tricks. I was getting ready to do something else, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, sell a seed. Come on right now. Whatever it is. I don't care what it is. Don't, don't. He, 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 it, it doesn't matter how much. Just be obedient in whatever he tells you. A dollar, $30, $50, $100, 25 Everybody give the kids something. Everybody needs to sow. You can't get something. You can't reap where you have not sown. Come on, you cannot reap where you have not sown. You cannot reap where you have not sown. Baby, I need you to do something with those t-shirts. Oh, God, somebody, somebody, somebody help. Can, you, can, can I assign him to you? You see that girl right there? She's getting ready to help you in this season. Find out how to get him moving. Come on, come on. Now. He needs to be working that string now. Now, now. Go Shabbat. Kesamando, everybody's, everybody's bringing something in this season. Find something to sell. I don't have cash. Open your Givelify app. Give something. Everybody bring. Everybody needs to sow. Even if you're sowing on your phone, come stand up here and bring it to the altar. It's like a sacrifice unto the Lord. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. This ain't about an amount. I'm thinking, I don't know what we've received today. It doesn't matter. This is without a move of God right now, whatever you have. In Jesus' name. Secondly, there's someone under the sound of my voice, perhaps, that does not know Jesus. Everybody's standing now. If you can, we're going home. If you don't know Jesus in the free pardon of your sin, there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Let me pray for you. 